Hello and welcome back guys. It's another day, another adventure. And I'm super excited today because I'm following up on another Kenneth Anderson's adventure. And this time, it's one of my favorite stories as well. And it's from the book, Man Eaters and Jungle Killers, published in 1957. And the story I'm following up, it's the Marauder of Kempekarai. Kempekarai is a very small hamlet between Gerati and Penagaram. So there was a man-eating tiger uh, which was terrorizing this village of Kempekarai and it had already made three kills during that time. So one was a person returning uh, from Metur to Kempekarai, he, he did not reach the village at all, he was taken somewhere in between. The second kill happened after 10 days when the village uh, lady had gone to the near nearby well to draw water, she did not come back, she was taken by the tiger. Bhaira's son-in-law Mara was also in the village of Kempekarai. But this fellow, he always went out to answer nature call even though if it was night. Because he did not like the uh, concept of, you know, dirtying his own house. Uh, because back in those days, there were no toilets within the house. A month after the first kill had happened, he went out but he himself did not come back. His wife heard a soft thud outside uh, their hut and also a growl, uh, so that was it. They did not hear anything else after that. So she raised an alarm, but nobody came to their rescue. And because the villagers already knew that maybe Ma Mara was beyond help. So that's what happened the next day morning, they found his remains and all. But Bhaira, who was also there in Kempekarai, he braved the forest where there was a man-eating tiger. He walked all the way till Penagaram. He picked up Ranga, who was another uh, you know, Shikari who worked with uh, Kenneth Anderson. So they both took a bus and came all the way to Bangalore. And that's how Kenneth got involved into this story. Three days later, Kenneth and Bhaira and Ranga, they came to Penagaram, parked, uh, parked their uh, car there, uh, his tooth baker there. And from there, they walked all the way to the village of Kempekarai. And that's how Kenneth's adventure here in Kempekarai started. So I am right now in Gerati and uh, just a few kilometers from Kempekarai. I have never visited that village until now. I hope uh, I can drive to that place and continue uh, with the rest of the story. And luckily this time I don't have to go alone and I have company and I have Pavan with me. So yeah, he had joined me for an adventure last year and uh, yeah, I have good company and uh, let's see how this one goes. <laughs> That's where the spider valley starts actually. That one? That yeah, one, yes? between those ranges. Okay. And that's where we should find uh, Kempekarai as well. Okay, okay we'll go. Yeah. So Kenneth, when he was close to Kempekarai, uh, when he was walking with Bhaira and Ranga, he did come across uh, fresh tiger pug marks. And he took clean measurements of that and he found out that uh, they were that of uh, a medium-sized tiger. And then they continued walking and reached uh, the village of Kempekarai. So we are entering the spider valley here. Fantastic place, man. And also check out there is absolutely no traffic here. So a little ahead, we should get a deviation to the left to the village of Kempekarai. So Kenneth, when he first reached here, uh, Bhaira and Kenneth um, along with Ranga, they had a conversation on how to address this tiger and uh, the only thing they could think of was Kenneth had to present himself as bait and sit out um, somewhere in the village and try to attract the tiger to him. So that seemed to be the only promising thing because the tiger had not taken any cattle up until then. So, even though Kenneth did not like that idea a lot, he agreed to it because uh, both Ranga and Bhaira uh, insisted on that. 
they however in addition to that they tied two cattle one at the rocky stream and near the village and the other one was at the place where they had found the tiger pug mark so this is the deviation to kempikarai guys i see a check post here as well and there's a watchtower there hmm so looks like kempikarai is in the valley beautiful forest all around man you have hill ranges there and over there as well that's huge and in between should be the spider valley okay we have a rocky stream here all right we'll continue here we come to the village of kempikarai <laughs> and there is a shiva temple i guess at the entrance All right, guys. So we have reached Kempikarai here, and uh, we are at the edge of the village. What a beautiful village uh, with picturesque views of the hills on all four sides. Uh, the village is inside the valley here, actually. Quite beautiful. All right. So when Kenneth was here, he, uh, like I said, he sat on the side of a well. Uh, a night to actually try to see if he could attract the tiger itself but um, that did not happen i mean he said it was one of the worst nights for him to sit near the well because the only reason he agreed to sit there was it was a full moon night and um, the problem was the moon would not come up until 8 o'clock because of the ridges that you can see there on both sides of this village so you can see hills are pretty tall so because of that the moon would not come up up until 8 o'clock or something so it was he says it was quite a harrowing time to sit alone uh, because it was still dark there was no moonlight till 8 8:30 so apart from him being absolutely terrified that night uh, he just heard uh, one samba deer call maybe at around 10 or 11 in the night and it came from the rocky stream that we just crossed now you, you saw the rocky stream so that is where he had uh, actually tied a bait uh, and a samba deer alarm call came from there and he thought maybe the tiger might be close by so he started you know using the rope uh, that he had tied to a vessel he started you know uh, dipping it into the water to try and simulate somebody pulling water from the well so he wanted to attract the tiger to him so but that did not work out nothing uh, turned up that night and um, so by morning he was pretty cold and frustrated and at the end of it so he, he again what he did next was he went down uh, the next day morning to the rocky stream where he had tied the bull uh, so there they actually found that the tiger had come within 10 feet of the bull that they had tied but he did not killed it so he was very surprised but at the same time he knew that must be the man eater because any normal tiger would not let go of a bull like that and what they did was they walked up and uh, to the outskirts of kempikara village and where they had tied a second bull and that is where they actually saw that cattle was was actually killed by a tiger so what he did next was so they came up with another plan for the next day he actually sat at the outskirts of the village on top of a tree so kenneth sat uh, next to the river there was a tamarind tree and on top of that he sat there and um, once he did that that night at around 8 o'clock all of a sudden the tiger came uh, kenneth realized because uh, you know the tiger rubbed its body against the surface of the tree and he could make out that soft uh, rub and as soon as it did that it actually looked up and saw maybe it found out that somebody was sitting on the top of the tree so it immediately charged up the tree 
Kenneth actually, uh, he had split seconds to react. He looked down uh, on his left side, but the tiger was climbing on the right side of the tree. So he immediately had to switch positions and now he had to fire from his left shoulder. And he turned around and he fired. Uh, the tiger was very close. The, tig the tiger by then had reached out its claws and, you know, scratched the bottom of the camp chair on which Kenneth was uh, sitting. In fact, it had even made an injury on his bottom. And as it did that, the tiger fell back and uh, into the back to the ground because it lost its balance, I guess. So that's what happened. And after that, uh, Kenneth had to decide whether to sit on top of the tree or to get down and uh, reach back to the camp here in Kempekarai to get some medis medicines. So what he immediately did next was he thought it's safer to brave the tiger rather than sit there and risk an infection. So he got down, carefully walked maybe a couple of kilometers to Kempekarai. There he, he had penicillin, he had injection, all those things. So he took a dosage of penicillin and he got his wounds dressed by Ranga and Bhaira. So that's how uh, he spent the rest of the night, he just rested. The next day morning they went back to the tree, but the tiger had not come and or visited that place. So that was about it. And they had to think of something else, some other creative plan for the next day. So what they did uh, next was, because Kenneth had an injury, he could not sit for long hours. So what they did was, you can see the rocky stream that we just crossed there. Uh, Kenneth had a plan to use the cart wheel from the bullock cart and use it uh, to make himself a hide at the river uh, rocky stream that we just crossed. Let's go there and continue with the rest of the story. Alright guys, so what Kenneth did that uh, the next day was he got a cartwheel detached from a bullock cart got it, I guess I my personal feeling is he mentions the first stream near the village, so I think this must be the stream. This stream is around 3 kilometers from the village of Kempikarai. Kenneth got a 4 by 4 feet uh, sort of a pit dug in this soft sand. He got himself got inside it by evening. What they did was they kept those boulders on the rim of the uh, that cartwheel and the cartwheel was raised at one end so by around 6 inches so that he could shoot. Uh, so they placed a dummy on one of these banks. I think maybe they say the farther bank. So I guess maybe that bank over there. So yeah, so they kept a dummy on the far, farther bank over there. A human dummy made out of straw and a villager's uh, uh, shirt and dhoti. So they kept it on that bank. And Kenneth was uh, lying in this pit on this river. So he, so that they left him by around 5.30 that evening. And um, he kept watching the dummy and also hearing to the jungle sounds. A bear came around at around 9 o'clock that night. And um, as it approached, it tried to actually uh, move the boulders uh, uh, which were holding the cart itself. So Kenneth shooed away that bear. But 10 minutes after that, he heard a very soft treading of a heavy body uh, near uh, the cartwheel. And uh, he knew that the tiger had come. So he actually got ready to take a shot uh, and uh, the next moment the tiger actually, you know, uh, came on top of that cartwheel. It peeped over the cartwheel and it's, it somehow knew that the human was be uh, below that cartwheel. So it immediately got down and tried to rake him with its paw. And Kenneth somehow managed to turn around within that uh, pit itself because he was not facing the tiger and he turned around and then you know as soon as the muzzle of his rifle touched the shoulder of the tiger he pulled the trigger and there was this huge explosion the tiger catapulted behind and it you know bit the stones and the cartwheel and all the bushes around and eventually it it kept it it went away from uh, that place but it kept roaring for the next good 15 minutes all around but the problem for Kenneth was, it started raining by around 1 o'clock or 2 o'clock as mentioned. Uh, and he knew this uh, river is going to get flooded if it rains. And he was literally trapped in that pit. So he had to dig himself out of it through that 6 inches gap that was made open for him to fire from. He started digging and he made a hole big enough for him to come out of it. He extracted himself out of that pit, came out on the bank. He put the dummy 
on a little uh, higher up so that um, he could uh, pick it up the next day and as soon as he recrossed the river by then the river was already a, a rage i mean uh, it was bringing in a log and everything in, with it so he says he was lucky to actually survive as he was walking back towards kempekara which is around 3 kilometers to 2 2 odd kilometers from here he met with ranga and bairav who were actually who anticipated what could have happened to kenneth and they were walking in his direction so that's what happened so uh, they all went back to kempekara again another five failed attempt to bag the tiger Uh, the next morning they again arrived at this place the cart wheel and all had washed away and there were no signs of the tiger anymore so after that they i think kenneth waited for three other uh, days here they tried to they tried a few other things but they were not able to uh, see or hear anything about the tiger and with kenneth's leave running over he had to return back to bangalore and he asked uh, baira and ranga to Uh, send him a telegram from penagaram so that kenneth could get back to action so that's of the his first part of the attempt to back the tiger here at kempekarai actually turned out to be a failure that's a nice bike you have man <laughs> pavan you tell me are you not getting bored no hmm? you like in the place <laughs> which way yes <laughs> so coming back to the story kenneth got a telegram from uh, baira maybe 10 days later that a pony was attacked uh, at the forest rest house at kodekarai but uh, that's somewhere in that direction it was old information so kenneth did not come there 6 days later he got another information that a bullock cart was attacked on its way when it crossed china river which is way down uh, near penagaram and it was crossing that and uh, uh, that confluence point of sopati and then going towards morapur skenet immediately left for uh, penagaram so he picked up baira and ranga from there and then he continued on uh, towards morapur uh, to see, to meet that uh, bulakart uh, driver who had apparently escaped from the tiger attack by jumping in between the bulls so to find sopati where sopati is the point where this rocky stream joins china river so that is uh, one point and from there uh, the village of morapur i have no idea where that is and i don't think i'll be able to find that out in today's vlog so i'll have to plan that a uh, plan a separate trip for that sometime in the future to see if i can find that place out all right let's go then hmm? so what we are going to do next is <laughs> Let's see uh, if we can drive a little distance in this road towards uh, further, because uh, anyway we can't go till Penagaram on this road. I think they won't let us go till there. So we'll just take the view uh, for a little further, maybe just enjoy the drive, and then after that we'll have to head back. is fantastic This road I'm not sure it's maintained all the way i hear some bridges are all broken in this road on both sides the lantana that's lantana bushes they have grown onto the road itself wow check out that valley there
my god fantastic fantastic hills okay that's elephant dung So the route is going downhill here. Wow. Check out the valley. It's absolutely beautiful. Beautiful, huh? It's like I'm in a dream. Yeah. I think they had made a proper road here because it's They have even put concrete at some sections. Oh man! But definitely, this no road is not maintained for sure. Okay, this is the. river crossing there's a proper bridge here a two wheeler has gone here also This bridge is intact but I think many bridges ahead might not be intact. Yeah. It's a very narrow passage. It's a narrow passage. Only a tiny car can come. Yeah. All right guys so we're heading back from here. So Kempe Karai was a beautiful visit but yeah to find out the place Sopati Morapur and all that will have to be another expedition. So I guess that's about it for now. Let's go back. Check out the forest here. Wow. 